So it's been about two days since Path Not Taken game mode was actually released for us. I've had some time to play around with it. Hopefully you guys have as well and just playing with all of these different risks. Hopefully you have found something that has worked for you. However, there is a very, very apparent meta that has been well evolving and coming up. And so in this video, I want to talk about this new kind of meta, right? So if we have a quick look at the ranking list, the meta is right here all over. As you can see, there are a lot of characters that you would see here that you would not usually expect to see. So today, let's cover off what exactly is going on over here. And with that being said, hi. Welcome back to another Revive Witch video. My name is Lace and you guys already know what to do. So I am not going to waste any more time and let's have a look at these different comps, right? For the first one here, we have Great Axe Rahal and you can see your boy Hollow. Hollow pretty much probably the strongest boy on the server. And this is essentially what he's using, right? I think he's gone, um, he's really gone all out on his comp here. And so we talked a lot in the Catherine video in some of like the previous videos, how you really want the meta team, which is going to be looking like Catherine, Tornell, as well as Akasha or Selenia. However, when you get to this part, Part of the world like the top the peak of the world number one things out here start looking a little bit different right so you see the Cersei over here and then you see the freaking Doran and you might be asking yourself why and that is my guys because of the sacrifice meta and with the introduction of Cersei and Doran, like we're, we're killing our own units off to gain like massive buffs the fact of the matter is is that having three of the same elements just well, it doesn't matter. Like we don't want the full Brimstone or the full Salt Stone or Mercury teams. Because if we literally sack off the Cersei, we can get a much, much better buff than 10% or even 15% all stat. And so to be honest, like when Cersei V first came out, I really didn't know that we would go into this kind of meta. Although a lot of people in the comments on that video, the Cersei V video actually pointed this out. And so first of all, if you have a look at this guy over here, Cersei V's enemy is marked and takes 50% more damage. And considering that Path Not Taken is like fully time attack, it is all about damage, damage, damage. This is insane. And this actually persists even though Cersei V has died. And so that is why Cersei V is sacked off. She is going to go in, she's going to drop the mark, and then after that, she is just going to get killed off. And for the rest of the battle, the rest of your team will do 50% more damage to the bad boy over there. However, the strategy does not stop there. So you see these gold pieces over here, the earth pieces, increases physical defense by 10%. And when taking damage, there is a 10% chance to gain one order energy. It's pretty decent. It's not mandatory. I would say that this set is not 100% what you need. Like it's the Cersei that you want for this strat, but the set is certainly not Nice, especially for like the sacrificial way that we are playing here. All right, and so that covers Cersei. You could also actually do this one where you could do like the magic damage and then this magic damage actually persists. But generally speaking, when you're playing any of these like path not takens, you're going to be running either physical or full magical. And so this sacrifice technique that Hollow uses and a lot of the other people. So you're going to see a lot of Cersei in the position ones looking to die, which is, <laughs> which is pretty funny to be honest. You're also going to be seeing these Dorans over here. And so if I click into a Doran and then I click into the passive over here, Casting Mysterious Gift Box has a 40% chance of increasing all allies' crit chance by 40%. Notice that there is no timer on this. Cracked. Like, utterly, utterly cracked. And so Mysterious Gift Box is even better, actually. Deals physical damage, but also on top of that, all enemies take... 20% more damage for 10 seconds. And so that, my guys, is why people are running the Doran in position one. They are, some people are sacking her, some people are not. It looks like the people at the top are probably using Doran more as a carry rather than a sack, but I have definitely seen a few sacks. So this one over here, as you can see, she's wearing nothing. And then if I come back down, maybe this one over here, let's see if this Doran is going in. And so as you can see as well, she is also wearing nothing. So yeah, the sacrifice meta is honestly, it's pretty freaking cracked out. Like imagine for the rest of the battle, you have 40% crit chance. Or alternatively, you freaking got 50% extra damage because of the Cersei right here, right? Now, the really, really cracked part about all of this is, well, what if you run them both, which is what Hollow is doing here. So run the Cersei, sacrifice the Cersei, and then have Doran come in as a full-blown carry. That means that you're going to be getting the best of both worlds, and in this case, Hollow is going to be juicing up his Selenia. And so this Selenia is like utterly cracked out. She's just going pew, pew, pew. Nothing can stop her. Hollow is now number one. And so that is the sacrifice meta in a nutshell. Like it doesn't have to be Cersei. You can definitely use it with Doran. As you can see, Doran is actually more prevalent, but it might be because these people did not actually pick up Cersei. Honestly, I probably doubt it. So yeah, look at this guy, Lice, Lisa. We have the Doran sacrifice into the Cersei who is fully juiced. It's just literally the other way around. All right. So hopefully that gives you kind of the idea in terms of like the sacrifice strat. So I personally used the Cersei and it worked quite well. I unfortunately haven't tried the Doran one yet, but like it's looking pretty cracked. 40 percent extra crit chance like for the rest of the battle 
I like to see it, man. All right, and so with all of that being said, like outside of this sacrifice meta, what exactly does the rest of the meta look like? So as you can see, Tornell is in virtually every single team. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight out of the top 10, nine, 10, 11, 12, and otherwise we've got the magic team over there. So honestly, like that's utterly insane. We don't see like the Aflins here. We don't see like the Caledonias or even the Catherines, although they definitely pop up in some of the other ones over here, right? But <laughs> look at that. Look at all of those freaking Dorans. And so what this is telling me is that Doran is actually a very, very safe investment. You want to be juicing out the Doran. You want to be juicing out the Cersei. And then if I come down over here for the white bear, <laughs> even more freaking Dorans. Because if you have a look at these team compositions, it's really, really obvious what's going on, right? You've got the Tornell, who is going to be juicing up all of these characters with her, not only her buffs, but also the chaos skill. Those chaos points that she is generating for you is trying really hard to counteract like that risk that we take. After that, it's always a damage amplifier, whether it be Doran or Cersei. And then lastly, it is a juiced out DPS. So for a lot of people, it's Yui because Yui is a fantastic single target DPS. As you can see over here, like the majority of these are actually Yui's, not really the Selenias. So there is that one over there. However, as you can see, there are some Selenias and the more I scroll down, the more variety you're going to see. We start seeing our Catherine comps over here, Catherine Selenia, Catherine Selenia, Tornell Selenia, and then we go back to some of the damage amplification comps over there. So yeah, hopefully that gives you guys a pretty good idea in terms of like the different characters that you do need to build, like the ones that are going to be staying around for a while. It's honestly looking pretty obvious. Again, like Doran Cersei, but also then Tornell, you got Yui. You've also got Selenia, but then like there are some bosses which are going to be like oh immune or like take way less damage from physical and so if that happens you're going to need to use the other team which is going to be primarily composed of these two characters Maya and Amanami and I do see a lot of Danas which is really really interesting but like as you can see Maya 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 is in virtually every single comp over here. So yeah, if you guys have Maya and Ayanami, they are certainly most meta here because of like the heals, because of the magical defense downs, because of Amanami's damage amplification. So just a quick look at her passive skill increases all allies damage by 20% for five seconds and can stack up to 40%. But then on top of that, we've also got a debuff for increases their magic damage taken by 30% on the enemy, which is, is honestly utterly cracked. You've got like two damage amplification skills on one character. I don't know, man. Seems pretty good to me. And then the the last thing that I do want to point out is that some people are actually still doing the sacrifice technique in terms of just the element, right? So as you can see here, we have a Flora level one, absolutely not juiced out at all. And so she is included in the team because she is of the salt stone element, therefore giving the entire team plus 10% to all stats only because it is only the first team that has the full elements. And so after Flora gets wrecked, you got your Maya coming in. She's constant, my guys. Maya is constant. Look at that. You got Maya, Tornell, and the damage amplifier, but Doran could actually be, in fact, a Manami. And so, yeah, that pretty much sums up, like, the entire sacrifice meta. I didn't think that it would be, like, so freaking prevalent. But alas, that's what we were given in the form of Cersei as well as Doran. And so, we've got to make the most out of it, right? And so, with that, I want to pass on the question to you guys. Did you guys know about the sacrifice technique, especially for the Doran or the Cersei? Because I know certainly a lot of people knew about, like, the whole, oh, we should stack the three elements first and then sack off the first one to get like more of a buff, the 10% buff. But otherwise, I do want to know how you guys are doing in this game mode over here, Path Not Taken. I'm not doing too hot because I, unfortunately, I screwed one day up. As you can see, my first daily was at a really, really low score and I can't recover from that just because like I just didn't have enough time. And I got the really low score just because I didn't have enough time to play. But that's how it is for me, right? And so yeah, let me know how you guys are going in this Path Not Taken event. And just remember that it is recurrent. And if you do end up dropping a comment down below, then I would really appreciate that because it means that you've watched up until the end of the video so thank you guys so much but otherwise please consider a like if this video did help you and a sub if you would like to see more but as your girl doran once said all good things must come to an end and so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye